Some people drink, some people smoke. I buy multi-tools. So we've got here the Victorinox Swiss Tool and the Victorinox Spirit. We're going to compare these two Victorinox multi-tools. These are plier-based multi-tools, of course. So maybe you, the viewer, can not be like me and buy every multi-tool and maybe just buy one or two going armed with knowledge about which ones are different from the others and which ones might be better for your purposes and whatnot. Now, of course, these are the Victorinox multi-tools centered around pliers. Most Victorinox multi-tools are centered around the knife and so therefore have a much smaller packet in the pocket. As you can see, even from this relatively chunky Victorinox cyber tool. So the cyber tool is based around the shape of a folded knife. These are based around the shape of a folded pair of pliers. So the cyber tool is about as long in the handle as the knife blade is. Whereas these guys here burst open to reveal a full-sized or you know, fairly full-sized set of pliers within. The cyber tool does actually still have its own pliers, but they are more akin to a folding pair of scissors and uh, much more light duty and generally just more for your grabbing and some very light bolt turning and whatnot. So we're gonna compare these two Victorinox scissors. Uh, the Spirit and the uh, Swiss tool both have other variants of themselves as well. This is sort of the most basic of the two I could find. I think this is the Spirit X and this is the Swiss tool X, the one with the scissors. Some of them don't have scissors, other times favoring a serrated blade. I much prefer scissors on my multi-tool than a, separate, a second serrated blade, so that's why I've chose these two. Let's look at them nice and close-like. Alrighty, so before we open them up, you can see they do things pretty similarly, just to different scales. So both of them have all their tools accessible from the outside of the tool, both just having only the pliers revealed when you open the thing up. The Spirit has a little bit more of a curved, possibly more ergonomic, uh, design to it, whereas the uh, Swiss tool standard has rulers on the outside. So rulers in centimeters and in inches, so inches on the side showing you now, centimeters when you turn it around. Uh, they are about the same thickness as one another, and the Swiss tool is about a centimeter taller than the Spirit when they're closed. These little metal um, you know, accoutrements here are the locks for the inner handle tools. Both of them sort of slide up and down. Uh, slight differences in, in visual design, but basically the same locking mechanism as well. So that's the two of them on the outside. Uh, sizes, uh, weights, I suppose, here and here for each of them, and prices uh, here and here. Now let's go into each tool and do a tool review. I'm gonna compare when I can, when they have the same tool, and sort of approximate the similar tools between the two of them, and you'll be able to see the full complements on each tool. So let's get into that. Now they both have an approximate uh, Victorinox pocket knife blade on them, made of the same steel as the Victorinox pocket knives are. The Spirit has a slightly thinner and slightly shorter version, whereas the one on the Swiss tool is basically identical to a standard Victorinox pocket knife knife blade. So bringing in, say, my cyber tool there. So it might even have a slight bit of reach over the cyber tool, but the, uh, the smallest and slimmest of the three is definitely the Spirit, which has a slight kind of curve to the back spine, kind of in line with those handle shapes, I suppose. Look, in terms of noticeable use, it's not gonna be night and day. You are gonna notice, I suppose, a slight bit of extra coverage on the Swiss tool blade versus the Spirit blade, but both of them are just fine as multi-tool blades and I wouldn't really give an edge to either one. It's just a slight size difference. Now, saws is an area where they do start to depart from one another fairly dramatically. I notice a pretty decent improvement on performance in the Swiss tool saw over the Spirit saw. Both are pretty good saws, but 
The ability for this one to be, again, slightly taller and now allows for a slightly more uh, dramatic taper in the saw blade, meaning that the spine can be a fair bit thinner than the teeth. So a good saw has teeth that are at least sort of a, a third thicker than the spine. So the spine should be, you know, only two thirds the thickness of it at the teeth. And that can really be done quite easily. And this one really glides through on the uh, Swiss tool, given that it is a slightly taller saw. When I do sort of the same wood saw versus saw, I find that even though they are almost the same length, it's not so much the length, it is certainly feeling like the thickness that makes it kind of uh, bind up a little bit more or just slow down a little bit more on the spirit. Now, both of these are pretty much better than most of the other companies' multi-tool saws. So it's kind of like a, it's a, a really good saw versus a great saw for a multi-tool. But uh, yeah, that's definitely a, an advantage to the, uh, the larger, wider saw of the Swiss tool. Do you use multi-tool files? These ones are pretty similar once again. Uh, it's just the case, once again, of Victorinox having to sort of thin theirs out and sculpt theirs on the Spirit, whereas on the uh, Swiss tool, it is more of a uh, solid, robust, rectangular type file. Uh, there is a slight bit more length on the Swiss tools file, giving it, you know, I guess, practically speaking, a slight edge over the Spirit's file. I don't particularly use the file a great deal on any multi-tool. Uh, I have files. It's a file is one of the few tools where I will actually go and get a full-sized hand file because it is much more comfortable and you can be much more um, precision uh, focused when you're using a hand file. Uh, that being said, every now and then I might knock a burr off or an edge off of something. These are your standard sort of um, flat mill and cross cut sort of um, uh, bastard style files, uh, you know, a rougher and a slightly less rough side on each. And then on the bottom of each of them is sort of, I guess you could use it to cut through soft metal, like a soft metal saw, just as a result of the file tread just kind of curving over the, the piece of metal there. So both of them are fine as files, but I guess pragmatically speaking, you'd get a little bit more file on your Swiss tool, so it's probably a slightly better file. Now, another pretty wide departure in quality is on the scissors. Now, the Spirit's scissors may look and probably indeed are a little bit more robust, owing that they don't have this kind of floating spring out here, right? But these have a tiny little mouth. These, these, these scissors have a smaller mouth than my exotic short hair cat. And she can barely eat a piece of ham off the floor. Now, uh, the scissors on the Swiss tool can actually be opened all the way out and make some pretty decent sized cuts. Uh, whereas these guys here, you really need to sort of chase and line up because you can't open them any higher than this. And that is a tiny little bit of snip snip that is gonna be probably too tiny for a lot of the things that you are trying to, to snip. So I would definitely say within a very large margin that the uh, Swiss tools scissors are far better. And in fact, the Spirit scissors are some of the weaker scissors uh, on a multi-tool, in my opinion.
Now, in terms of drivers, well, I guess you've got one, two, three, four, five on the Swiss tool and one, two, three, four on the, the Spirit. However, the Swiss tool's sort of largest, flattest driver. Well, it's gonna have limited utility as a flat driver. And in fact, whilst it is a driver sort of squared off tip, this is actually more of the, the pry function. And they call it the, the heavy crate opener. Uh, of the uh, Swiss tool. Whereas that function is kind of met on the Spirit with a very, very thick uh, wide bottle opener combination tool, which has the, the thick flat driver on it as well. All these three, one, two, three drivers will be about as good at driving those thick slotted screws that you sort of very rarely see. I have a couple and a couple of pumping like water supply things and that's it. Uh, they're all gonna be about as good as that. And uh, really this is almost a completely sort of differently focused tool. Whereas, uh, you know what, this and this are probably more comparable in that they are the prior tools of the uh, their respective multi-tools because the Spirits is actually a little bit thicker. It's probably the thickest of all the tools uh, on across all the, uh, the you know, pairs uh, range of, of, of accoutrements. So um, yeah, just in terms of the drivers, you've got the little skinny one, which is slightly smaller on the Swiss tool than on the uh, the Spirit. It's just more of a, like maybe a three millimeter wide, whereas on here it's a two millimeter wide shank at the tip. And then you've got a really good, both have a very good 3D Phillips. 3D Phillips is on multi-tools is something that I kind of really, I, my, one of my favorite things you can put on a multi-tool. I never really like the two and a half D ones as much. I feel like they always slide out of the screws. I use my multi-tools for turning a fair few screws that I randomly come on as I as my tour my property from day to day. And uh, yeah, the other one is the can opener tool, which sort of has a mini flat on it, which is a little bit bigger on the Spirit than on the, uh, the Swiss tool. Um, I don't particularly use that one as a driver ever, but I know some people do. So you can use that on the, uh, on the Phillips it's sort of got that narrowness to it. It's almost like a 2D Phillips driver, but with a really good chunky sort of number one or number two almost Phillips on both of them. Both of them are pretty well set for having great drivers. So I'd call it about even Stevens really. And in terms of prying, both are about as good as the other. Uh, the pry on the Swiss tool is a little bit wider with perhaps a slightly, you know, narrower tip to be able to get in and under something to start the pry, whereas the uh, one on the Spirit is actually a thicker piece of steel entirely, so it might even be a more durable pry. So really, both of them probably have their pros and cons, and uh, both of them are sort of similarly effective. Of course, this one here on the Spirit has some extra sort of, uh, you know, bottle opener and wire, uh, compactor or stripper or whatever this little blade edge here is you know which might be either a help or a hindrance to you while you're prying if you get it under something it might get caught or whatever this is definitely more of a, a pure pry perhaps but uh really i wouldn't say that one is so much stronger than the other that i would call a favorite here an interesting tool on both the combination sort of variable edge tool it's a hard one to really put into an apt descriptive but basically it's got a chisel tip and a couple of various other sort of blade type uh, functions on each of them now i think the swiss tool spirit does it slightly better in that it gives you this other slight edge here just for making for a, a bit of a, a, a PC package opener if you're somewhere where you don't want to get a knife blade out. It's just enough of a little corner to be able to tear something open a bit easier than using your, your fingernails or a car key or something lame like that. So uh, I think it does a slight edge over the, the standard Swiss tool and the, uh, the wire stripper here or this, it, I guess this blade here is just a little bit wider so probably able to accommodate just a few more things to be able to you know run it along or, or or a scrape down or something like that. So slightly better sort of combination edge tool on the Spirit. And as you can possibly even see by it, I might show you up close, I do actually use this a fair bit just to get get all sorts of things apart, really. It's often what starts the pry for me, or just to tear something off of something else, get some glue off the back of something, all sorts of things I do use my little, uh, little uh, chisel type tools for. And I think the Spirits is just a little bit better. Now, do you ever use the awl on your multi-tool? Whoops. The awl is like a little handy spike for putting holes in. Generally, leather belts is the, the main sort of use that my brain goes to. But uh, both of them have a very effective little awl. And you see on the Spirit, they've gone and 
put on shades of that classic Victorinox package hook as well, which is, you know, the, uh, the famously confusing sort of baffling tool that you need to sort of watch YouTube videos on what it's actually for to, to really know what to do with the thing. So they've kind of gone and put that uh, same kind of little grabby feature on that there, which, you know, I guess you can't knock it and it probably does give it the slight edge over the Swiss tools very sort of plain all the all that doesn't have any sort of cool features whatsoever so uh, both of them are absent a sewing hole which is interesting on the uh, standard Victorinox Swiss Army Knife all you usually get a sewing hole let's get that one out and show you if you see you get a little little hole in the middle there I can look through it at you right now and that's what you could use to I suppose put a piece of thick leather thread through and push on hey! <coughs> might be allergic to awls. Um, you can put a little bit of thread there and push through your fabric, but uh, these two sort of absent of that as well. Both of them have somewhat of a secondary blade on the side of each of their spikes. Uh, whereas on the original sort of Swiss Army knife, it's got more of a curved blade that really does get a good kind of augering action uh, out of the tool as well. So the best one is on these knives here, but out of the two of them, oh, I suppose having the extra hook functionality may well put the spirit over the line. Now, in terms of the pliers, it truly is a case of the Swiss tools are just like 20% bigger than the Spirit, and that's about the only difference. They're both sort of the, the snub nose style, so they're a little bit flatter. Both of them even have the same amount of knurls on them for, for grabbing onto bolts and nuts. So even though these are slightly bigger, they don't really have any more features or anything like that. They are just kind of just the same, but inflated. Um, they both have about the same uh, radius of opening, so this is them fully opened, pretty much identical in terms of, you know, how much your hand needs to span to get them open. Uh, the Swiss tools are usually a little bit lighter, and I've had a few variants of both of these tools, and the Swiss tools are usually kind of slightly nicer from the, the factory in terms of easy to manipulate with the hand, and that's it. Whereas the spirits are a little bit more comfortable to really grip and bear down on because they've kind of got more of a rounded, less boxy handle style to them. Uh, I mean, that being said, the uh, Swiss tools has the ruler on either side of the handle, which is at a separate tool or a ply feature. Whoops, who knows? But uh, yeah, that's you know, perhaps something else you want to consider as well. Overall, they're both really good pliers. Uh, neither of them have the replaceable blades that you're often seeing in other brands' uh, multi-tool pliers, which to me is absolutely fine. I'm sure Victorinox are a reputable enough company that if something went terribly wrong with your, your cutters, you could probably send off for a repair or something like that. But uh, in general terms, it's not something I've ever come up, with, up against. I've had these spirits for years and uh, I've cut all sorts of things with them. They've got an interesting little, like uh, a definite hard wire section, which I always appreciate because I do lots of fencing work with my multi-tools and uh, these can certainly cut any of the wire that I've come up against. Uh, unlike some of the brands, the Gerber, for example, I've shattered those tungsten carbide cutters uh, three times now, and I'm currently on my fourth set. So uh, these are pretty good, very, very time-proven plier heads, and I couldn't really say which as a pair of pliers is decisively better than the other. These might be slightly more comfortable, whereas these have slightly nicer actions. So I guess that's, uh, and that's just this one here, so I'm not sure if that's uh, uniform across the range, but, uh, if I had to choose between the two of these, I have a pretty difficult time. So which would you choose if you wanted to just get one Victorinox plier-based multi-tool? Well, uh, for a start, I would really say consider getting even the CyberTool first. Unless you really need the heavier set of pliers, uh, the CyberTool has a little set of pliers on there, which does you know, a pretty good job at the finer work that pliers are often required to do. So grabbing little bolts or with, with me and my wife, my wife's got all those funny earrings, you know, the ones that are all up here and stuff. And I often use a little set of mini pliers to grab the back of them when she's trying to get it in or out or change the stud or whatever. Just these funny little, little uses for pliers we have. So I would seriously consider, you know, don't knock these until you've tried them perhaps. And the CyberTool has a whole array of other very cool little compact features in it. It actually has more tools all up on this guy 
guy here than on, on either of these. So definitely consider the cyber tool. It's not something that uh, you should immediately dismiss just because it's not a plier-based multi-tool in terms of part of the whole chassis is pliers, right? That aside, out of these two, I would probably choose the Swiss tool. I have less sort of bother about the size and bulk of a multi-tool. Generally speaking, I'm gonna carry them on a sheath. So the extra few grams on the Swiss tool, I mean, it's not a, not, it's not a meaningless weight. I know it is a slight, you know, beefiness that you may notice, but really, you seem to be getting much more, uh, you know, full-size tools in terms of everything. Most of the Spirit's sort of four main tools are kind of hobbled down to fit these very sort of slick uh, plier handles. And uh, as such, uh, you get a slightly less effective saw, a slightly smaller file. You get the scissors, which really aren't anywhere near as good as your standard Victorinox scissors that are on this, uh, or even this guy here. So really, for tools that are about the same price even, I would say the Swiss tool is probably the slightly safer buy and it'll have, it's, it's less likely to have something about it that you find annoying. Whereas I find the scissors on this actually a little bit annoying and everything else about it, it's a great tool. But this one here has real, no real blemishes. A couple of the tools on this are done better, but I think the Swiss tool is an overall safer package to buy and just be generally happy with the whole lot of things on your Victorinox multi-tool. So that's the conclusion I'm drawing in the video. Only by like an A, this is an A and this is like a B plus, you know, like not by a huge margin, but uh, you know, just if you're curious, I would give this guy an A plus. The cyber tool is fantastic and it's a really good Victorinox tool if you don't need a big old set of honking pliers. But yeah, between these two, Swiss tool is probably uh, my main go-to recommendation. Stay tuned for more multi-tool videos. I'll be comparing uh, Leathermans and whatnot in the next few uh, videos time, as well as other knives and steel tests and all sorts of other silly uh, gear related things. So please like and subscribe and join me on my journey through uh, multi-tool addiction, which has come roaring back as of late. <laughs>